Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are ready to learn, so let's get started. Now there's going to be two other kind of different topics that we're going to talk about, and the first is the radius of gyration. The good news for students is that if you know the moment of inertia, radius of gyration is a piece of cake. So basically the radius of gyration is a measure of the distribution of cross-sectional area from the centroidal axes. Now you're saying, <laughs> what? Well, the best way to describe it is to show you guys kind of an example. Let's say that we had a rectangle, and we said that if we wanted to find the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis in the x direction, it was just base times height cubed divided by 12. Now we're going to take this and we are going to express it in an equivalent system. So rather than having an actual rectangle, I'm going to take it and just express it as a point. Now this point right here is the entire cross-sectional area of the shape on the left kind of concentrated in a single point. And here's the trick. What I want is I want both of these scenarios to have the same moment of inertia. So we know that in order to get this point to have the same moment of inertia as the shape on the left, we're going to have to specify a distance. And this distance right here, well that's actually the radius of gyration. So that's all it is. Now if you want to calculate it, again it's pretty simple, it's just going to be the square root of moment of inertia divided by the area. So if you found moments of inertia, well chances are you know area at that point, all you need to do is divide one another and then square root it, so it's a piece of cake. Now you're saying, okay Clayton, how the hell do you use that in design? Radius of gyration actually makes our lives a lot simpler, because what it's actually related to is instability problems known as buckling. Now buckling is something that you've probably already seen a lot before. If I were to take something very slender and I were to squeeze it, as we can see there comes a certain load where it just pops out to the side. That's known as buckling or instability. Now we can actually calculate this force using the following formula where it's pi squared ei divided by basically the length or the height of our object squared. This is known as the Euler buckling load. Now if I want to express this load in terms of stress, we know that stress is simply going to be force divided by area. So if I were to divide it by area, I get the following term. Now if we look in here, we actually see something special. We have an I at the top and we have an A at the bottom. Moment of inertia divided by area. If we look up at our radius of gyration formula, well we basically have the exact same thing. So I can substitute the radius of gyration into this formula and then if I were to rearrange it, I get the following, where I get pi squared E, where again E was related to the material properties, divided by this term right here, where it's basically the height of our object divided by radius of gyration. This is actually called our slenderness ratio. If you look at concrete, steel, masonry, timber, all of them have specific rules regarding slenderness ratios. Because what happens is, is the higher the slenderness ratio of your structure is, the chances are it's going to buckle. You don't want things to buckle. It provides no warning and it's basically just a collapse. So a lot of the codes will say, okay, if you have a high slenderness ratio, which again is based on radius of gyration, you have to do a lot of very specific things when you design. One of the things that we talked about earlier, I'm not too sure which lecture, was the idea of second order effects. We said that if we were to have a wall or something that had basically a lateral load, as well as a, an axial load, we don't actually have any moment produced by that point load P. But we said if we consider deformation and the wall starts to bend, well now that point load P is actually going to create a moment about O. So what you'll see is a lot of clauses in steel and especially concrete and masonry, they say if you have a slenderness ratio and it's typically greater than 30, so if you have a slenderness ratio greater than 30, you're going to have to start worrying about all these problems and you're going to have to do extra analysis and it actually becomes pretty gross and makes design pretty hard. The key thing I'm trying to say is radius of gyrations plays a key role in actual design. So yeah, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.